Hey hoodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Homestu. <laughs> Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Grab a drink, grab some popcorn, grab a snack. Today we're counting down more of the products that I tried this year. If you're new, hi, welcome. I've already done the 17 worst products I tried this year, and now we are doing the 17 meh is products that I've tried this year. And so we're working our way all the way up to the best of what I tried this year. My channel is really about loving my makeup collection as it is. So that's what my content really focuses around. But this year I did obviously try some new items as I am ranking them here in this very video. But if you like the kind of content where you see a lot of the same stuff being used by the content creator, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video so more people can find it. And I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. No pressure though. I just really appreciate that you are here. Everything that is on my Facebook will be listed down below if you are interested. I don't know how I felt about this shirt as a sitting shirt, but we are sure committed. We're committed to the bit. We got a little mini skirt on. We're really doing our best today. We're back in the cozy corner. Our special guests will be the met -is products. Am I going to put them on my face? Will there be any application? No! But I highly encourage you to go into my back catalog if you were interested in seeing more detailed thoughts about anything that I am talking about today, because I sure did use them in videos. Coming in at number 52 is the Merit lip slick. I have the shade Falcon. Also, the bevy that I'm sipping upon out of my Justin Bieber holographic, not holographic, whatever that's called whenever like they move that thing, peppermint latte that I made in my Nespresso. Also, as I move through these items, I'll try to tell you what I got in PR, but if I forget what to tell you in real life, there will be a little thing on across the bottom saying that I got it in PR. Anyway, the Merit Lip Slick in Falcon. I tried this more recently, and so here's the thing. I like it. I don't know if I'm a lip oil girly. I know a lot of my cohorts here on YouTube, they're like very into the lip oil. I don't know. I think I'm more of like a lip balm girly. I don't mind it. The thing is, I got my, I got my, I got the shade Falcon, which is like this dark brown, which arguably was it designed for my skin tone? Probably not, because probably a lip oil, you want to be kind of close to your lip color. And my lips are certainly not a deep brown, but I like deep brown. I like wearing it. So the thing about it is I feel like a lip oil, if I'm using it, I don't want it to make my lips look worse if they already look bad. And I want them to be nourishing enough to help heal my lips. So what's kind of happening with this product was I was like putting on my crusty dry lips going like, this will feel really nourishing. And it does. And I, I don't think that it's like a product that like is making my lips look worse. I don't think that is the case. But I do feel as though because of the brown pigment, it would like collect in certain spots, like the dry spots of my lips. And then it would look really bad. It would just kind of make my dry lips look, look worse. And so I don't even want to put it on my lips unless my lips are like, like perfectly no bumps, no lumps, no coconuts kind of deal. That's kind of why I rank it this low, but it's not something unpleasant. And it's not something that I'm like also either planning on decluttering from my collection. Cause I do think it's very gorgeous. But I also think that if I were to do it again with the knowledge that I have now, I would buy a lighter shade of it so that it matched my lip color a little bit more so that I could get away with wearing it. I don't know if they have a clear option of the lip oil, but I probably would actually just go straight to the clear option because I do want to put it on my lips whenever they're maybe not at their best. And the brown shirt really enhanced that my lips weren't at their best. But if you have deep lips, if you have deep, like if you're a deep skin toe with like deep brown lips, this probably could make your lips look better. But for me and my choices, I made the wrong one, I think, in this scenario. Brown lip is normally not the wrong choice for me because I love a brown lip. If you're new here, I love a brown lip. I'm wearing a red lip today with yellow. I'm doing a lot of things I don't normally do. In fact, I feel like in every video, I'm like, I don't normally do this, but like, maybe I do, you know? Like, maybe I am. Maybe I do more than I think because I try to say that I'm like a neutrals only kind of girl, and then I'm like, that's not true. It's simply not true. Look at me. Anyway, I received this in PR from Merit. I think that's really all I have to say about it. I think that this one's gonna be a little bit shorter because I feel like these products are maybe better or or worse than my experience with them. I just feel like my experience with them was like very mid. I wouldn't say these are good. I wouldn't say that I wouldn't repurchase some of these. Like that's why we're like really landing with this grouping. So the next two I'm going to lump together in 51 and 50. These are both from the Unseen Beauty. These are their Spectra Eye Colors. I don't actually know what the names of them are, but I have both of them. There's the black one and a silver one. I don't want to call these PR, but I did get them for free, but the brand didn't send them to me. I had ordered from them and then like it took forever for them to ship them out to me and like I waited a month and then like I got no shipping notification and then I emailed them and I was like hey like I ordered these like here's my confirmation number and they were like oh my god we'll send them to you for free and then they did and I'm kind of glad that I did get them for free because they did not turn out to be what I wanted them to be and again I don't think these are a bad product I think I made a bad judgment call about 
what these are. So these are very cool. <laughs> these are really, really cool. And if I, now I do post looks on Instagram, but I don't normally do my makeup explicitly for Instagram because I think there is like, and, and I'm not saying that if you do wild, crazy makeup for Instagram, that that is not makeup that is acceptable to wear in the real world. I don't believe that. Wear whatever makeup you want into the real world. If you have like a whole rainforest painted on your face and that's what you want to wear out into the world, I support you and I think you should do that. That's not normally what I'm doing. So here's why I think this is like a really cool concept for someone who does Instagram or photo shoots. <laughs> but it's like so specific. You have to take your pictures through your phone for this to work. What these do is with your flash on your camera, on your phone, what happens is they turn into that like reflective, there are, are pigments in there that are those the reflective materials. I have like some pairs of shoes that are like, that look like this, where like whenever there's no light on them, they're just like gray. And then when like a light directly hits them, they reflect back really bright and kind of like flash back into the camera. That's what these do. I use them a couple of times. And the thing is, they're very cool whenever you can get them to work. And they do work under the very specific scenario under you are using your rear camera with your flash on they will work. I wanted to be able to take pictures in my good camera. The camera that we are currently using is like also just a regular camera. So I wanted to take pictures through that. The flash on that camera does not activate it. Like it sort of does, but not as well as the, the flash on the back of my phone. And I thought maybe I can use the flash on the back of my phone with this camera. Turns out, no, it has to come, like the source of light has to be like such a way associated with the lens for it to like capture purely. The magic's a little bit gone, but also let it be known whenever no one seemed to notice when I was doing this on Instagram, like I was trying to show off the qualities of these products, like where I would do a photo with no flash and then I would do a photo with the flash. And I don't think anyone caught on that there was a difference, but I was also using them with like lots of colors. So with the black one, I think if you were just doing like a black liner and then you like did both, people would be like, wow, so cool. But the gray one is kind of translucent when you put it on. And I think it's like that to be designed to be put on top of color products to make that effect happen like what's happening in the black one with like any color that you would want it to happen with it's like one of those things that like if you're not looking for it then you don't understand but it does work in videos and in photos on your rear camera here's the thing i'm not going to get someone else to take a picture for me and like also like trying to catch yourself this way is really difficult. If you are someone who does like editorial photography, if you're a makeup artist who does editorial photography and you are like playing with light and flash on your phone, I like double checked the verbiage because I was like, I didn't realize that I could only do this with my phone. And had I done like any semblance of digging down deeper to try to find that information, I would have found that in fact, they do say it has to be like done with a camera flash with the camera lens. And therefore it kind of makes these products not entirely moot to me, but like, it's not even like if I was going to a race or something that it would get activated in real life for someone to see it. So it's like just such a specific product. It's cool. The concept is so cool. I'll try to find one of me trying to utilize the product. But yeah, unfortunately, while it's very cool and I want to be the cool person who like is using the very cool new thing, it's unfortunately not something that like really worked out super well for me because it's just not what I do. And number 49th, in number 49th, I can't believe you, Mimi, I'm first, came third in the voting. I think I just quoted that wrong. It's the Retro Glam Palette, which I did purchase myself. I hate putting this this low. Okay, a number of things off the top. I probably will talk about this again in another video, but I feel some kind of way about the brand, Natasha Denona, at this time. If you're not following Stephen Ford on Instagram, well, you first of all, you should. He's awesome. He's a great friend, and he does really cool makeup looks, and he's you know, doing some pretty valuable swatches on his Instagram. He has a YouTube channel, but I don't think that he's going to be doing YouTube anymore. Anywho, I will remember, try to remember to link him down below. He posted a reel. Well, it was on his story first, but then he made it a reel. So Natasha Denona had, I think they were eyeliners with their ingredients listed. They had marked the product vegan. And then in the ingredient list, Carmine wasn't listed. So he has a sensitivity to Carmine. He bought it because he was like, these are vegan and there's no carmine. He did his due diligence, read the ingredients before buying the product. The product arrived, he puts it on his face and he has irritation from the product. And he's like, 
this is weird. Wonder what's in here that's causing the irritation. On the box of the product, it does list Carmine, but it also says that it is vegan. <sighs> he has brought this to Natasha Denona's attention. And luckily, Stephen have screenshots of the website before that the switch happened. But essentially, Natasha Denona, the brand, has decided that they're going to gaslight him and say that's not true. And they like secretly change the ingredient list to include all of the ingredients now on their website and remove the vegan label. But other websites still have it labeled as vegan and ha don't have Carmine listed in the ingredient list and are not posting the full ingredient list. Cult Beauty, I believe, is the only company that had them listed appropriately from the get-go. I will link some resources down below about this so you can check into it yourself. I probably won't be buying from Natasha Denona going forward. I obviously have a lot of Natasha Denona in my collection already and I'm obviously not like going to throw it all away. It is still one of the formulas that I like the most in my collection and I still have a lot of it to get through to enjoy enjoy so there's not really a problem there I'm just gonna you know maybe do a little bit less featuring Natasha Denona on my channel at this point let's talk about the retro glam specifically I did a first impressions video I'll try to remember to link this somewhere because I, I didn't link anything last time because I was just like feels like a lot of work but I'm recording way ahead of time now so hopefully future me decides to put in the effort. In my first impressions video, I talked about how much I love the mini retro palette. It's my favorite Natasha Denona palette I think I own. That might be true. Like I think the mini retro might be my favorite because I love it. It's so easy. I love the colors in it. And whenever Natasha Denona released the retro midi palette, I was completely disappointed because it was all pinks, which is like not my gig. I like pink sometimes, but not a full palette of pink. I'm not going out of my way to buy that. This felt like, you know, a course correction with the retro glam to be like anyone who was disappointed in the full set like the midi retro was now getting their wish so I was very interested in it because of that but then I tried it and here was the big here's the two big problems I have with it the brand is very good at texture a lot of their palettes have good texture I'm thinking of my 28 pan palettes so much beautiful gorgeous texture in there so many different finishes even in the mini retro there's like a various amount of textures. The textures fall so flat in this palette versus the other ones where it's just like this feels like so half-assed and it was just like it just felt like something to appease us but not something to actually bring delight and joy because if you would have made it really interesting texturally I think a lot of people would have forgiven the fact that this is not really super olive. I I guess I wasn't expecting olive because the the mini retro doesn't really feel olive like the greens in there don't feel super olive so I think a lot of people were disappointed with that this leans a little more teal than it was olive I'm saying that as a general complaint for other people <laughs> not really for myself I like don't really mind that they're a little bit blue that's okay by me and also I think if you had interesting textures and maybe you had like less mattes and more shimmers with interesting texture people with various skin tones would be more attracted to this but what's happened is because they're like these desaturated blues and pinks which there's not even that many pinks in the palette which is you know, fine by me, but if you were trying to do an equal balance of things, we didn't really hit that. People with deeper complexions might have been able to see value in this palette, but I think what kind of happened is like people, it, it just like didn't really work out. The second thing is like, I was excited to use it the first time. And then after I used it the first time, I was like, oh, I don't really think I'm that excited about it. As I've been like trying to use it to review a little more effectively and give you more of a better response is that I don't want to use it. For removing my feelings about the brand after what happened to Steven, because that happened like not long after I got the palette, there are times where I would be, be working out or whatever. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to use the retro glam so that I can get my thoughts out and out just like a little bit more. And then I would go to do my makeup and I never wanted to reach for it. What's going to happen, you know, I'll talk about this in a declutter later, but like I think I'm going to keep holding on to it so that I can use it to, you know, make my own palettes and like BYO palettes in the future and build my own, you know, like Natasha Denona palettes in the future because, you know, I have so much of the brand. Now you add the layer of what's going on with like the way they've treated my friend and I'm just some like... Yeah, I don't know about you guys anymore. And that's really unfortunate. And it's going to take a lot of time, I think, for me to feel like I trust the brand again. And so, yeah, I don't know. Feeling pretty icky about Natasha Denona, not going to lie. So the Retro Glam is like a victim to that. It's a little bit disappointing for all of the reasons previously mentioned. In 48th place, we have the blush palette from Jouer in the colorway Coquette. I mentioned this in my last video. I've been on a bit of a blush journey. This was my first blush journey of the year where I was just like trying blush formulas because I was like just interested in trying blush formulas. Before this year, I didn't have very many cool toned blushes and I was like trying to find cool toned blushes that weren't pink or purple because it's like not my favorite colorway. This palette 
they seem to be more like lavender leaning, which I was like, okay, maybe I could be into that. So I bought it because I was like, sometimes I want to do cool tone looks. And then I like don't have a blush that I can wear with a cool toned look. And it's like problematic because when my makeup journey goes like this. Wasn't into blush at all when I first started my makeup journey. Then got really into blush, but warm blushes, specifically orange blushes. So then I had like all these orange blushes and then I'd be like, now I want to do a cool tone look and I would have any blushes to do a cool tone look with. I don't know why I'm so repulsed by pink blush and it might be just because my skin is rosy to begin with. So it's just like, okay, I just like, you know, kind of put all of the rosiness away in my skin. So why would I want to bring that back into the skin? Here's what I'll say about this. Beautiful formula. I think these are really, really nice blushes just the right amount of pigment they don't they are not hard they're not difficult they're very agreeable it's nice to put the darker shade on the back of your your cheek and then like use the lighter shade up front i don't really put blush on the apples of my cheeks because i have a rounder face and i'm trying to keep all the blush back here in order to like contour and like lift and make my face you know appear thinner using it as a contour product as it is these are beautiful but i don't like the colors i don't like the colors i shouldn't never have bought this and I should have the thing is there is a blush duo from Jouer that has this beautiful sparkly orange blush in it but I don't really care about the other blush in that palette so it doesn't make sense if it came in a single compact I would buy the orange one I think because I do like this formula and I think it's really gorgeous I would say they have a little bit of a sheen to them so they are like they're not like completely lifeless but I do think they are like matte like like the Gucci was like a luminous matte I would kind of describe these as a similar finish so there's nothing wrong with them it's just, the color of them is what's wrong with them however they were really handy when I was doing cool tone looks because I was grabbing for them all the time. I do have another cool tone blush. It's from KVD, the shade Rosebud. And I have been getting more into that blush shade recently and I've been moving away from the Jouer. And I also will talk about some blushes later on where they are cool toned or they're like neutral enough to wear with cool toned looks. And I like them a lot more than the finish, like than these Jouer blushes. So great product. And if they have a color duo that you'd be really interested in, I think that these would be a worthwhile formula to try if you've never tried the Jouer blushes. Nothing that I think you need to go out of your way for. It would just be like if you found colors that you don't already have in your collection and you were like interested in trying them, I think that's the kind of vibe that I give. I, I would give these. So like not the worst, not the best, but pretty good. In 47th place, before I do that, I'm gonna take another sippy. 47th place is the Rowan 75 quad. If you've been here for a while, you know that this particular palette was gifted to me by a subscriber who didn't like the Rowan formula at all. And I received three Rowan quads from that subscriber. Thank you for sending those my way. I really appreciate it. Problem with it. <laughs> it's... <laughs> What's interesting about me is like, I want to do a cool toned eye, but I want my, my cheeks to be warm as shit. So I'm a conundrum amongst myself. But the problem is, is that these eyeshadows are too warm for me. <laughs> I would rather my eyeshadows lean more neutral. The other thing is with the Rowan 1111 and the Rowan 52 degrees cool, the formula has the shimmer particles that are much bigger and different in them. Rowan 1111 has the, like, the largest shimmer particles of the Rowan quads, in my opinion. Like I just think, I feel like you get the most sparkly effect from the Rowan 1111, which, hi, if you're new here, I like sparkly things. So like that appeals to me. And then I really like the cool tones of the Rowan 52. And I was like, these are interesting. My collection doesn't have a lot of cool tones, but you know what my collection has a lot of? Oranges, oranges, warmness, because I got into the makeup gig around the time when Modern Renaissance was coming into popularity for like two years or something everything that got released was like these warm tones so like I'm familiar I know her I have the Natasha Denona sunset it's not in its original palette anymore but I still have all of the shades from it and I got rid of the packaging I have this and if I wanted to do it I would do it but I don't so I very rarely use the shades from the sunset palette from Natasha Denona but they're there and I just feel like these weren't as sparkly or as special feeling as the shades in the other two Rowan quads I was ended up trying this year so this is really a matter of color story that I have a problem with and a little bit of the finish now if you want to see more about the Rowan quads you can go to my Rowan video I did like a whole video on the three quads that I tried you know very late to the game but I really wanted to give I wanted to throw my two cents in because the thing with the Rowan quads before I tried them was that I had this obsession with wanting to try them but like I was afraid of the price point because I had this weird instinctual feeling that I wasn't going to like them because I didn't everyone who reviewed them like really loved them and but like they all said it they creased and I was like I don't understand why you're giving these a good review but like telling telling me that they have <laughs> they are prone to creasing it didn't make sense to me now that I've tried them I know what 
they mean. I do think that they're creasy, but also they kind of give you like the rock star creasy look. Now, if you have really dry eyelids, maybe it's like a different scenario for you. But like for me with the Rowan quads overall, they are very creasy but it's again much like everyone else who I heard review it I feel like it's kind of like it's a cool kind of creasing versus like a, a a kind of creasing that I don't like color story and like the finish not being as immaculate as I feel like the other two provide that's why this one gets ranked like significantly lower than you'll see the other Rowan quads get ranked in this video. It just was like a, uh, the color story wasn't for me. I just need you to know that in the cut that I just made, I saw one of those like thousand leggers crawling across my floor. And then while I got up to smash it, my whole shirt just came unzipped from the back and just like fell off my breast. So 46th place, the Merit Signature Lip in the shade Slip. I did buy this one, but I also have another one on this list from Merit that I did get in PR. <sighs> Oh my God, Khaki's going to disagree with everything I'm about to say. So I do love the, f la la la, la. <laughs> who's that chick? Love, love, love that stuff. Here's why this one ranks a little bit lower. Now this one is more of closer to my lip color, but it has a little bit of yellow in it. And I like that. I actually really like that about it. But the reason it's ranked lower, whatever reason, and this has been said by not only me, but I've seen other creators say this, is that the lighter shade, the lighter shades tend to be softer. So when you go to apply them, they hit the side of the bullet. My slip lipstick looks like I've been chewing on it like a kid chews on an eraser in elementary school. That's what it looks like. So it's not really pretty to look at anymore. Now I'm going to tell you this, my 1990 lipstick d doesn't do that at all. It it's not even like approaching the side of the bullet. So I don't know why this one did that. But someone else in my comment section when I mentioned this problem happening in a previous video said that they have 1990 and it does it to them. I do keep it in my purse so it's been in the heat and in the cold. I have done that with slip but 1990 basically stays in my vanity so I'm wondering if you because I it was in the summertime whenever I was like carrying slip around the most and like kind of because it because it kind of was working more for me like a lip balm than it was like a lipstick because it was so subtle on my lips so that's why I'm just like okay like maybe it's just the lighter shades but anyway just because it got really ugly in the tube that's why I'm thinking this lower because I do have less of a desire to use it because it's not pristine bad <laughs> it's like really bad like I can't emphasize like it looks so chewed up I have other lipsticks that hit the side of the bullet and like it happens gently and it like doesn't like mess them up as much but with the merit sink like this particular one it's happened very it's like very bad it looks really bad is that petty yes but this is my list okay and I'm allowed to rank things however I want to rank them in 45th place is the West Atelier Vital Skin Care Pressed Powder here's the thing about this powder I kind of like it but also it's like not not the best powder. If you watched my Charlotte Tilbury series last week, you'll see that sometimes powder can really excite me. I like both of the powders that I tried from Charlotte Tilbury, and that was a big surprise to me. I like the Chantecai Perfect Blur Powder. And so when I tried this at first, I was like, okay, there's like a soft blurring that was happening, not as much as my Chantecai, not as much as I would even say the, the airbrush powders from Charlotte Tilbury provide, but like it was doing something. And I used it for some time, but I do feel like because of my oily skin, it was something that I needed to powder a lot more than with other powders that I have tried so I was like okay like so there's that but you know if it's supposed to have all these ingredients that are good for your skin and what's really beautiful about it is like it's a, a kind of it's it does seem to me that it would be much more suitable for someone who has dry skin it never really fully mattified what I was trying to put it on I've heard other people say that they don't like this under their eyes I thought it was fine under my eyes the thing was it's a very expensive compact it's a very expensive powder I feel if I'm applying it and it's just fine then we run into a problem because if it was great if it was like the most beautiful powder I've ever put on my face then I'm willing to pay $75 for it and also I think that's kind of biffed me and I I will have to double check myself in editing. These are refillable, but they have never, they've never, they haven't released the refills. I know that I run through powder a lot less than other people because I'm not doing my makeup all the time. And I will say like, I'm, I'm not the best at touching up. Like, so I'll just let myself be oily and like look like a mess. That's what I do. I'm very punk like that. Like, I'm just like, let me be messy, okay? So like, I don't bring powders out with me if I'm going out at night, if I'm wearing a full face of makeup. I'm like, it's like whatever happens in the night is what happens in the night. We're no touching up. We're just gonna let it happen. Like, have I come home from a wedding and my eyeshadow that was perfectly on my eye somehow tilted and was like going down the side of my face yeah but you know that's the adventure that my eyeshadow decided to take that night and I also fell in the grass that evening so like maybe maybe there was a lot of stuff happening that could have made my eyeshadow move another issue I have with this is this compact is not a friendly compact the magnet is 
so strong, so strong that when you try to open it, there's nothing to hold. Like there's all there, almost nothing to hold on to in order to pry it open. So me, someone who doesn't really have mobility issues with my hand, I'm having trouble opening it, which you are now people who have mobility issues. If they wanted to try this product, I don't know that they would be able to get it open. And I know that they probably have tools and stuff, but like, why aren't we like, why aren't we taking that into consideration? When we're making, it's actually the compact is actually what fucked me off the most about this because I had to every single time break the tension of the magnet by sticking my nail in there. Now my nails aren't painted right now, but I do like painting my nails. I don't want to chip my nail opening a powder compact. That's like, no, I don't want to do that. So I hate the compact. It's beautiful and weighted. That's the other thing. It's gorgeous. One of the most gorgeous compacts I've ever had the opportunity to hold in my hand. Truly impossible to open. And I hate that about it. And it like kind of bugs me because I don't feel that way about the sticks. I have some of the blush sticks and I have the highlight stick. Those aren't too hard to open. It's like the magnet pressure isn't so strong. Like th they did not design this compact very well. I think they need to go back to the drawing board, keep it as weighted, but make it easier to open. Obviously not so easy to open that if you throw it in your purse, that it's going to pop open. I understand that's why the magnet is strong because it's a powder. People are very likely carrying it around with them. I get it. But like, it doesn't need to be like that. It, you can find a, either a different mechanism or you change the pressure like, or put something on the outside that makes a bigger ridge to flip it open easier because it's just it's I don't have dainty hands. I have divine little hands, but I don't have dainty hands. OK, so like I, I couldn't back to the actual product inside the compact after about like a few months of use or a month of use. I think I did a month of trying it out before I reviewed it on my channel. It had these little like pellets. I wouldn't really call it hard pan. But like something funky was happening on there. Now, I'm not saying that the product was going bad, but it did not seem to like that my face oil was getting in there. Feels like a problem for a powder, doesn't it? Like if I'm powdering my face and then, you know, going back in to the powder because I did because I have oily skin and like it wasn't the best at like controlling oil. So I'm going back in, going back in. And then my oil is now causing a problem with the formula. It's back to the drawing board for this powder. It's, I think it, but the thing is, it's like beautiful. I liked using it. It was just like, there was a lot of things also going against it. Number 44, 43, and 42 are three shades from Terra Moons. This is like a little unfair because I actually, I just got to know the one eyeshadow I'm about to talk about a little bit better. But this is more of a problem of me not getting around to using them too much rather than a problem with the formula. So like, I think, you know, take my ranking with a little bit of a grain of salt because like I didn't really get to these as as much as I should have. In last place, I have the shade Centauri, but like I also have Terra Borealis and Moon Tide here. Centauri actually, I think, is a disappointment. When I got it in person, that was the one that I was like the least impressed with. I do have another shade that's ranked a little bit higher because I did I did get around to using it because I really liked that shade. The thing was, I bought these during a sale from Terra Moons. I think it might have been a Labor Day sale that they were running. I bought four shades. And they were 25% off and I put them in with my singles and then I never saw them again. <laughs> and that's a problem because what happens with my singles, sometimes I'll buy a really beautiful single eyeshadow and like ones that come in pans, not that have their own packaging. You'll never see me again. It's like what happens. They like dance away, twirl into my magnetic palettes and it's like, bye. But Centauri, I remember feeling it's like, it was like much less pretty formulate like the formula was not as good as the other ones it was like tough and gritty and didn't feel very well mixed compared to the other ones and or the multi-chrome whatever it was supposed to be like the shift wasn't strong with this one so that also became a problem for me when using it it's just like ugh, it's like fine now terra borealis i just did a single spotlight with and, uh, it's so pretty it's so pretty it probably would rank a lot higher but I did these rankings a, a while ago which is really great whenever you like circle back and try things and you get to know them better so pretty so pretty so spark it has like a copper base with like blue shifty sparkles in it uh, like so a pretty common shade that you'll find when people do duochromes like at any price point but what Terra Borealis does differently is the sparkles are really big and so then the light hits ah uh, Oh, it's so pretty. I have it ranked a little bit lower than I think it should be at this point. So I do apologize. But you know, that's what happens with rankings is sometimes you get it wrong. And again, it's also my opinion. So like it also is like a thing where, like, yeah, it is a single eyeshadow. And like maybe a single eyeshadow isn't the best purchase for me, especially when it's going into my pro pants, especially because I have so much of the Cleona stained glass collection that at this point, it's like when I'm bringing in new single eyeshadows, it's like... I probably didn't need to buy it because I probably already have it in a Cleona. And I'm not saying that Cleona is the best. And I, I, it's, 
again, I just went all in on Cleona at one point and that's my problem. Like I did that to me. Finding these indie brands that are doing these really cool multi-chromes, when I buy from them, I probably already have a similar multi-chrome in my collection. So it's not, it doesn't always feel warranted. But I think Abrasion from Cleona is a similar shade to Terra Borealis. And I think I like Terra Borealis more, but I need to like more digging on that later. And Moontide is really pretty. It is really pretty, but I just didn't get around to using it. But it also has like big, beautiful sparkles in it. And I'm like, <laughs> it is pretty. So not really the product's fault, except for Centauri. But it's my fault for failing to use them. <laughs> it's really what it boils down to more. In 41st place is the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. I know not all other beauty creators cap the amount of foundations they like to keep in their collection at any given time. But I have made the conscious decision to keep it at four. Right now, I have more than that and I don't love that <laughs> but I am decluttering so it's gonna be fine like we're gonna get back the basics back to four I reviewed this very well I think this is like a beautiful product <laughs> I, I really do I think it's so nice I really do but when the push comes to shove and the other foundations I tried earlier this year it wasn't better than those in my opinion and that's really why it's ranking low here it's also been a long time since I use it I did the review and I had it for a while and I liked it and then the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick was sent to me in PR. And I felt like whenever I was using them both in tandem, they kind of filled a similar spot. And I preferred using the complexion stick. They're not really the same thing, but like they were filling the same like light coverage space in my foundation collection. So like I would consider both of those products to be like going out for the movies or whatever, like during the day, getting lunch with a girlfriend you haven't seen in a couple years and catching up. That's the kind of makeup that I would consider both the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer and the merit so I like the merit just a little bit more so that's why they're rare so I haven't really touched this product in a while but I remember it being like really beautiful I loved the glow of it it was so glowy and beautiful and that was before I was really using like oil primers now I can get a glow with any foundation it doesn't really matter what it's supposed to look like I'd be shiny and I like it okay lord forgive me for I have sinned for having oily skin and also wanting to look glowy what was beautiful about this is like even though I had oily skin I think people with oily skin would actually like this product so I really don't have anything negative to say about it. One, been so long since I used it. Two, another product kind of bumped it out of my brain space. And my like, so when I categorize it in my brain, it's just like, yeah, it's been so long since I tried that. I really can't like remember. But I did do a full review of this where I did like three days of application. And then on the fourth day, I did a wear test. And then I went into ingredients. I also remember it having like both chemical and physical sunscreen, which I thought was bizarre. If I recall correctly, like that is something that was with this. That was like the weirdest thing about it. But like the container was like pretty nice. Although I felt like it wasn't as squeezy as it needed to be, but I still had a lot of product in mine at the time. I liked it. It's not a bad product. In 40th place, the Oryx Smoke Reflect in Ego. This was kindly sent to me by a subscriber for me to try because they said they didn't want it and they were like, would you like to just like try it? Of course I would. I don't think this is something that I ever would have bought myself. This very product has actually kind of changed the trajectory about my opinions on a lot of one and done or like very easy kind of eyeshadow look. So here's what happened. I get this. At first, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to work this in. I'm not really someone whenever I sit down to do my eyeshadow where I'm like pulling for one thing and just like smearing it on and calling it what it is. But I love a shimmer topper that's already been discussed on my channel, well documented on my channel. One day I was doing a foundation wear test and I didn't have a lot of time to do eyeshadow and I was like, perfect. I'll just use the smoke reflect. I am pretty anti-cream eyeshadow because it doesn't really hold up on my lids or it used to not. Or perhaps maybe the smoke reflect has a pretty good formula. So I put it on. I'm basically doing a smoke reflect wear test in conjunction with the foundation wear test I was doing that day. And by the end of my work day, barely any creasing was happening with the smoke reflect. I couldn't believe it. And that is what got me even more excited and interested in trying the Rowan quads. Because I was like, if this is the kind of creasing that you're talking about, then I can handle that. Like, I would like that. So I consulted some of my subscribers on Instagram that I knew have had tried both. So like, I like DM die and I was like, hey, what's the difference? Tell me more. Because <laughs> I'm like now very invested in this. I don't know that I would buy one of, another one of these, to be quite honest with you. I don't know that I love the shade that I got. Well, I'm so pleased to have been gifted it. I think if I were to buy one, I don't know that this would have been the one that I would have chosen. But I do think it is kind of the grungiest and the most aligned with what I do 
if I were to look at the range that they have. I know they had a green one last holiday and I think it was limited edition and I think that would have been if I had known now what I like you know if I had known then what I know now about the smoke reflect I think I would have purchased I think I would have purchased that one. The thing is, I don't pull it out and use it very often. And while I have some other one and done eyeshadows that we will talk about later, they're not creams, but they're going to rank higher in my list of things that I tried this year. This is still not one that I'm like regularly pulling for. But the I do think that the cream blends out beautifully. It stays on the eye pretty well. And I have very oily eyelids and I didn't use any eyeshadow primer or anything like that. I didn't prime my eyes at all. I just used the cream straight on my lid. So it held up like way better than any other products normally do whenever that happens. The topper is pretty dry and it's not as actually, it's like, I wish it was more, not too much more sparse, but more sparse. I think that the, whenever you use your finger, it's like too much, but whenever you use a brush, it's like not enough. And then it's like, I had to pack more on or either way. It's like, I'm always fussing with the amount of like the glitter topper that comes with it. It's like, I haven't found the perfect balance of that. It's like not my favorite topper shade. It's beautiful. I wish that the topper was maybe a little more duochrome or like had a little more instead of being like a straight silver topper like added just a little more intrigue to like the silver that's happening because it's like a lot of silver beautiful product just not what I'm reaching for often which is like why it ranks a little bit low in 39th place the Odin's Eye and Angelica Nikvis Hella palette everything got so messed up <laughs> if you were here if you were a subscriber to my channel whenever this was all going down this was a hell of a loo the nocturnal palette from Glaminatrix was coming out around the same time that this palette was coming out. I love a grungy green moment. I love grungy colors. I was really keen on wanting to try the Nocturnal palette from Glaminatrix. And I know you're gonna say like, I've had plenty of opportunities since the original opportunity. The day that the Nocturnal palette was going on sale was the day I was going to see Marina. And if you're new here, Marina is my favorite recording artist. That was the 12th time I saw her live. So a very important day big day in the Hope Mess Tom household. And they went on sale right at the time that I needed to be at the venue. So I had, I was not worried about buying the Nocturnal palette whenever I was like trying to get to the venue. I had early entry. Like it was like a whole thing where I had like to be there at a specific time. And like I had no chance in hell of getting the Nocturnal palette on the first go. But I still had a craving for an eyeshadow palette and one that had grungy greens. And Yelica made this palette with Odin's Eye. And there are some grungy greens in here. So I bought it. While there are some beautiful shimmers and beautiful textures, my heart really lies in that bottom row with all of those sooty, like, dirt colors. They're so pretty. But the lighter greens, I don't really care for. And there's some pinks in there. And previously described in this video, you know that I'm not super interested in the pinks. And while I think it's a beautiful palette, and I do like the Odin's Eye formula, I did get a little bit of hard pan in some of the shades. And actually, it happens when I'm swatching <laughs> in the review video that I do for it. You know, I used some tape, it came right off. I'm not really saying that as a downside, like hard pan just happens sometimes. So I'm not trying to say that the formula is compromised by that, but now I don't really stick my fingers in mattes as much whenever I get a new palette because I'm like, I'll do the one swatch for the video, but then for the most part, I'm just using brushes in those shadows. But I guess if you do apply mattes with your fingers, it's something to be weary of with the Odin's Eye formula. I was thinking about this palette recently and I was like, wow, I haven't used that in a while. And I haven't. Every time I use it, I like the look. And I, you know what's so funny is I almost always use the pinks whenever I use it. Like not exclusively, but I always incorporate the pinks into my look whenever I do use this palette. And a couple of times I have worn it in videos before even looking at my description box. People are like, oh, that's the Hella palette. I don't think there's like anything technically wrong with this, but I just didn't use it that much after the initial excitement of it. That's something I try to avoid. Like I don't want to bring things into my makeup collection that I use and then forget about. Like, especially if I'm using my budget to purchase them, I want to be a little bit more discerning about that. Now, obviously, I've gotten some PR and this was something that I did purchase outright. So it bothers me that it's like something that I spent my money on and then that truly wasn't something that was inspiring enough for me to continue using. And it's not that I'm saying that's a bad palette. It's not that I'm saying it's an ugly palette, but it's like a palette that stopped singing to me. There's a moment where I could like swing back around to it in the springtime, which is like possible because I do feel like we were heading into spring when this palette was released. I even did like a... Um, an eye for an eye where I like duped the palette with my collection when like next to it to see how close I could get. I got pretty close. <laughs> Even if I were to depart with this palette, it's like I'm not really missing that much. The shades that I like the most are those sooty shades and you'll find out later on in this. I brought some other superior sooty shades into my collection later on in the year. By the end of the year, I'm like, that's like mid, you know, that's how I feel about it. But I do think there are other people 
who would really get a lot of joy out of this and find this palette very, very fun. Unfortunately for me, it's like not me. In number 38, we have the Too Faced Eyeshadow Primer. I was using this eyeshadow primer from the brand Air Atelier, a small brand. All they did was make primers. They had eyeshadow primer, face primer, lip primer. That was the whole brand. That's all they did was make primers. That eyeshadow primer changed my life. Up until that point, I had been using the MAC Paint Pots because they had worked out the best for me. The Air Atelier, I, it was the best. It was the best. The brand stopped making product. They just kind of like, they said they were just like done. It wasn't like, I don't look, I don't know. They didn't say anything about hard times. They were just like, the time has come for us to just not do this anymore. <laughs> That's like, was the vibe. I had to seek out a new eyeshadow primer. I was in Sephora. Tommy, who is like a friend of mine from having worked at Sephora. I was like, Tommy, what eyeshadow primer should I try? I had pulled my audience a couple times and everyone said the NARS. The NARS is good. Well, the NARS is so popular, it's hard to get your hands on. Tommy says, try the Too Faced. The Too Faced works just, just about as well as the Air Atelier. What both of them do is with satins and mattes, they make them last all day. Now for like glitters and like shimmers and stuff like that, I need to use like a glitter glue or like some other kind of adhesive. I have worked out with eyeshadow on my face, which I don't recommend. But I'm not even doing it for testing reasons. It's just like I'm at this point in my day where I'm like, okay, it's time to work out. Done 45 minutes sweaty ass Peloton rides where the rest of my face is all melted off. But my eyeshadow is still there. The reason why it's so low, it's like not exciting. It's not exciting nor new. <laughs> and it's from Too Faced, which I know a lot of people aren't really interested in. It's a delightful little, it's a delightful little product, you know. Sorry, my foot's been in the frame for who knows how long. Oh, let me just bring my other foot up in frame. If you sell these, you better give me... If you screenshot, if you, you owe me money if you're yanking your tools to my feet. I'm just saying, you know, I have bloody ankles and I charge more for that. Not an exciting product. I'm not going to say to you that this is the best eyeshadow primer. I do prefer the Air Atelier. This one's like a lot of product ends up on the doe foot. It's like, and then you just like kind of like blend it all. But there's a lot of, also a lot of product in the product. So <laughs> there's a lot of product in the product. There's like a lot of product in the container as well. If you wanted to try it and you hadn't tried it in a while, it's good. <laughs> it's so, it holds up. This is a newer purchase in 37th place. I have the Charlotte Tilbury hypnotizing eye pop in the shade Cosmic Rocks. If you watched my budget check-in where I kind of basically reviewed how I felt about this one, it's really pretty, but I should have stopped at Smoky Quartz because Smoky Quartz has my heart. Smoky Quartz has my whole life. And I know that's like a little bit of a spoiler, but like Smoky Quartz was really good. And that's what I went back into the, I went, I, I took my money and I like scooped it back into the Charlotte Tilbury hole. And I was like, let me grab this one. Disregarding the fact that I did a whole Charlotte Tilbury brand review last week. But actually what was happened was I bought all the Charlotte Tilbury stuff. And then I bought the hypnotizing eye pop and Smoky Quartz. And then it was very funny because I was like, this is the only Charlotte Tilbury product I've ever tried. Trying to keep it secret that I was like, behind the scenes trying the full brand or like a lot of the brand and it was like very funny and then I ended up buying another Charlotte Tilbury product anyway here's the problem the thing about Smoky Quartz that I like about it and I already like, if you've watched my budget video you know what I'm about to say whenever I tap Smoky Quartz in the outer corner of my eye and then tap it more gently moving it towards the middle a lot of the deep pigment stays on the outer corner it's a smoky eye and it just gets lighter and it has like a gradient all the way to the center by the inner corner of my eye all you have is sparkle. So it's almost like doing an inner corner highlight, easy breezy. There's not enough depth in Cosmic Rocks for me to do that with like the blue, but it is really beautiful. So unfortunately, Smoky Quartz was great and has value because it's a one and done smoky eye for me. That's how it's worked out for me. And I thought maybe Cosmic Rocks would be a one and done blue smoky eye, but it just doesn't have the same depth. So I have to pair it with other things. And so it kind of loses value in my collection because it's not a one and done because that's what I desire it to be. It's in its own compact, but it's like, how stupid is it that I'm pulling out a single eyeshadow and then I have to pull out other eyeshadows. Now I'm not saying that you can't wear it as a one and done if you're like into just like blue all over the eyes and you might be, but I'm not like blue. I feel like is something that I have to finesse to make it feel good on my eyes which normally means doing orange like doing an orange base and then like doing blue on top that's what I like because they're opposite sides of the color wheel if it had the depth that I needed it to and it worked the same as smoky quartz like where I could just be like boop 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 that's great but it's not that for me and I still like it and I have worn it like <sighs> I don't like wearing blue eyeshadow too often but I have worn blue eyeshadow a lot more because of it so it has done something it was maybe not the wisest purchase for me personally I should have just stopped at smoky quartz because I would have been like these products are so good but also I might have led some of you astray 
I stand by smoky quartz though. We're rounding out this video. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about today is the Isamea Rubber Lash. I tried four mascaras this year. This was my mascara from July to October. I liked it. You know what I did like about it? This was $39. I don't mind buying a luxury mascara, but like 30, if we're closer to 30, I'm. but it's like almost 40 and I bought it just because I didn't want to only review the eyeshadow palette it always made my lashes look really good I was wearing it all summer in the humidity and it never like transferred it like held up pretty well it's not a tubing mascara the thing was it was interesting because I just think that whenever you hear rubber lash you think it's gonna bring the most drama and while it did bring volume and length and it made my lashes look really good it didn't look like the imagery that they were probably because like you would have to put so many coats on to make it look like what Isamea's lashes look like in the promo photos. And I'm not about to do that. And I, I don't know, to my detriment, typically only do one coat of mascara because I I cannot be fucked to like layer mascara up. It's a lazy trait of mine, but like I don't do it. The one thing with Isamea's range that we have yet to see the ramifications for is that <laughs> if she decides to actually follow through with none of her products will be legacy products, meaning that they're going to cycle through. And then once they're gone, they're gone, which like really hasn't been the case. So I don't know if something changed, but like I did listen to an interview from her, like whenever the brand was launching, she wasn't going to have like legacy products that lived on the shelf forever. Like the, so it's like, if you end up loving rubber lash and it, you want it to always be your mascara, there is a finite amount of time for that. Now, I know a lot of mascaras end up just getting discontinued in the ether at some point anyway, but it's like, is Amaya's basically promising you that you're not going to get that? So it's like, wh what is the benefit of someone buying this and then falling in love with it and wanting it to be their mascara? But maybe they bought it on sale as you were discontinuing it, but they didn't know that. You know, it's like all these things that could come true. So that's kind of why it rings lower, but I thought it was a beautiful mascara. But I also have a tough time from being on the internet and hearing back from people in my comment section, most of the people who are subscribed to me don't want to buy a luxury mascara. There, I mean, there are people in my comment section who absolutely do. But like whenever I pay for a $30 mascara, they're like, you know, you can get a mascara for $10 or $5. And I'm like, no, I know I can. But like I have typically historically gotten along with these ones. So it's like also when I'm trying a uh, mascara, I do keep in mind that most people are don't want to even pay $30 for a mascara, let alone almost 40 it's really hard for me to like make a recommendation be like yeah that's worth your 39 dollars it's hard for me to say to myself yeah that was worth 39 dollars it's one of those products that goes away every three months and it's like well i mean if you're following the the guidelines however that one does say it has a six month shelf life but i would not use it past three months but that's my personal that's me what i would do i'm not judging you for your mascara practices all right babes that's it we did it. Another 18 products checked off the list. Next time we're going to get into the good good. Not the best, but the good good, which is exciting. I'm excited to get into that. That's the stuff where when I talk about it, my face might light up a little bit and I'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> it's like so good. And I, that's what happens whenever I like a product. I don't even know what to tell you because I like it so much. And I'm just like, it's like I'm flirting with you about the product. I'm like, oh, it's so good. And it's just like so good. I mean, like, and that's all I can say about it. I can't really discern and tell you why it's so good. It's just like, it's so good. I'm like the worst product reviewer in the world. <laughs> Anyway, if you're new here and you are not subscribed to me, I would love to have you subscribe. We still have two more videos. And again, if you haven't checked out the worst products I tried this year, that's ready for you right now. Hot and ready. Just like one of those pizzas from that pizza place. <laughs> Little Caesars. <laughs> subscribe make sure you like this video because that helps me out and ultimately it's all about me and i'm also on patreon if you'd like to support me there but no pressure to but everyone who does subscribe to my patreon gets the same benefits it's just like if you want to support me there you can at whatever level you want you're going to get the same stuff that everyone else gets because i run a socialist society on my patreon <laughs> That's the video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember to follow your hoat. <laughs> okay, we're not going to do that. Follow your hoat and you'll find me. I appreciate you all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>